Good morning, and welcome to The Mental Breakdown. I'm Dr. Bernie Wilkinson. I'm Dr. Richard Marshall. And on today's podcast, we're going to talk about the relationship between resilience and self-identity. We are formally. Uh, we we did it on the morning show. We did the whole yeah. Happy New Year thing. We should do it here as well. Happy. But it, it deserves to be repeated. New Year. We talked about it so long. You yeah. know, back in 2016, um, all those years ago, TBT. We kept talking yes. about the New Year and talking about the New Year, talking about the New Year. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm. But I'm. Never mind. I'll talk about that later. No, I'm glad that we didn't get into resolutions, and right. I'm glad that we took, as I as I have been reading other websites and other people, other professionals. I am glad that we didn't take that. Here's how you make resolutions right. business. Um, I, I'm, I'm happy with the way we approach the whole resolution issue. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. Get some permanent change. Very different than making resolutions. Absolutely. Right. Absolutely. And, um, but it's good to be here. Good to yeah. be in 2017. Finally in 2017. It feels different. Not really. I'm just, it doesn't. Well, Oh, I know. do. I am ready for 2017. Uh, well, I'm ready for it. I am ready I just, to get some things done. I was ready for 2016 so. too. So you know, but I wasn't. I feel bad. People, people say I can't wait until 2016 is over. And mm -hmm. you, you sort of feel bad that yeah, it meant that they had a bad year. Yeah. So yeah. Uh, try to make 2017 a little bit better without major resolutions. Right. Okay. But just, just making the important decisions and changes that we need to make. That's right. Uh, it doesn't have to That's be a resolution. Right. So go slowly and succeed. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. But we're going to start out this year with a really yeah. interesting topic well, and a really interesting uh, perspective that I hope will, will shape a lot of the decisions you make through the new year. Right. And as we're progressing uh, through, through the 2017 yeah. and that is the relationship between resilience Mm -hmm. and, and identity or, or right. self concept. Love um, these two topics. Yeah, and I'm, and I love that that we put them together. Right, right. Mm -hmm. So, we'll, we'll, and we'll kind of get into where we how we started having this conversation. But let's mm -hmm. let's do a little bit of definition. Right. Uh, a little bit of definitional work first. Operationally define some things. Okay. So when we talk about resilience. Of course, we're talking about the ability to return to a a, a previous. Uh, previous state. So resilience is being able to, um, well, not really re returning to a previous state. It, it's your ability to uh, manage challenging experiences without being um, defeated. Destroyed by them. Right. Yeah. So, so you're able mm -hmm. to overcome challenging obstacles and still pursue and, and, and make it through to the other side and keep going. That's right. We, we all... If, if you're always moving forward, mm -hmm. if you're always challenging yourself, if you're always trying new things, you will inevitably encounter disappointment, right? sometimes failure, mm -hmm. little defeats along the way. Mm -hmm. But you have to have the resilience to overcome all those, right. to, to overcome the disappointments. And we talk about particular individuals mm -hmm. who seem to have an abundance right. of uh, this quality. Right, you know, and where does it come from? Right, right. right. So, it, if we think about a couple of just a couple of quick examples mm -hmm. of that, you know, you you have individuals who have overcome tremendous physical odds, like like right. Stephen, Stephen Hawking, Hawking. Right? right? Stephen Hawking is a is a very well known uh, scientist, physicist, cosmologist, mm -hmm. um, and he over has overcome significant right. physical limitations that began to, to affect him earlier in his life mm -hmm. during early adulthood. Right. And just instead of saying, okay, you know, I can't, I'm not, I I'm can't. losing control of I my can't. body. Right. I, I mm -hmm. can't do this. I can't do that. And instead he overcame by finding a new way That's by, right. by pursuing who it is that he knew that he was to be. Right. He continued to, to strive for that despite that, significant that's limitation right. he overcame the that's resilience he mm -hmm. overcame the physical limitation right. we see this in professional athletes we right. see it in entertainers um people in the news who overcome um of different kinds of obstacles we don't we don't um 
celebrate this enough. Mm -hmm. I don't think we, mm -hmm. we celebrate it enough because we all should be developing resilience. Right. And we can we can learn how to develop it by seeing others, mm -hmm. by using the example of others. I think Stephen Hawking is one. I particularly like Hillary Clinton. She's another great um, example. Whether you like Hillary Clinton or not, you can right. absolutely despise Hillary Clinton if you choose to. But my goodness, talk about resilience. Right. I mean, this woman could have given up many, many times. Right. Uh, never did. Yeah. Um, and she didn't come back for vengeance or she didn't come back because of anger. She came back because she had a very good sense of who she was. Right. You know, so she yeah. was able to weather all of the uh, just... I mean, I don't know how she did it. Right. I mean, I, I think most yeah. people would have just folded their tents and stolen to the night. It would have been easy for oh. her to say, you know, after Bill Clinton's second term, with, with all of that embarrassment and all of those issues, it would have been very easy for her to step back and say, okay, you know what, I'm, I've got to get out of the, the, the media spotlight. I've got to get away from this because this is too much. But instead, she went on to become a senator, a uh, U.S. senator. And and then yeah. you know she tries to to run for presidency and, and she right. she loses that and she lost the nomination she right? lost to, the nomination to Barack Obama and, and then instead of folding her tents and, and going away she becomes Secretary of State that's right he offers her the job of Secretary of State and she could have been angry she mm -hmm. could have been a, no I'm not going to be she accepted the position um, did well mm -hmm. okay but had that whole Benghazi thing. Right. Hung around her neck, right, and then had to endure the criticism mm -hmm. and the grilling. Nobody right. has ever been grilled the way Hillary Clinton was grilled over right. that. She, Eleven hours, yeah, of of congressional testimony yeah. that would wear down, yeah, even the hardest rock. And again, it, after after serving her time as Secretary of uh, State, State, she instead of going away, mm -hmm. she then ran. Uh, for for president right. again, won the nomination and ran for pre a, a valiant effort against won the um, popular vote. Right. You no, know, I mean so, we have this electoral college thing that, 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 that finally selects the president, but she did win almost by three million votes. Yeah, the popular vote. That was after all the grilling and right. the accusations and lock her up and put her in jail and we're going to indict her. That's a withering um, right. um, amount of um, of. of um, criticism and accusations uh, leveled at a single individual. Right. It'll be interesting to see what she does now because That's right. a, as she has over time, she, she's likely to return uh, in, in some form some or capacity, capacity. Right. To, to serve and to do the things that she um, is driven to do. And, and I think that that is what is so fascinating about this idea of resilience is that you have these circumstances. Another one is, you know, sort of one of the classic examples of course, has always been Ben Carson. He grew up in this really yeah. difficult neighborhood with, mm -hmm. and he almost quite literally had the choice of which paths to go th right. go down. Yeah. And he chose a path that took him out of crime and out mm -hmm. of really uh, some some more unfortunately stereotypical right. uh, pathways to become a neurosurgeon. That's right. And mm -hmm. so, I, I think that this idea of resiliency is, is something that we hold on to and has always more or less been seen as well some people have it and some people don't right right and what we're going to talk about today is how resilience actually seems to be related and, and tied to our sense of self how we see ourselves that's right because we tend to think of resilience as something that either you have or you don't have right you know it's part of your basic temperament I'm of the opinion that we all have the capacity to be resilient. We have to develop it. We have to mm -hmm. nurture it. We have to see it in others. Um, but I think we all have the capacity to be resilient, um, to, to develop mm -hmm. um, resilience, to, to increase our ability to, um, to be resilient. Right. Okay. So, so let's talk about what a sense of self is, because that's, I think that this is going to be our basis for the rest of our conversation. That's right. I think that's the foundation right. of, of resilience, right. is sense of self. Right. Mm -hmm. so, so when we talk about identity or, or a sense of self, what we're talking about is how you define yourself. And, and it's, it's, we have to resist the urge of becoming so specific that we, we miss the forest for the trees. That's right. But what we're talking, this idea of 
the sense of self or the self identity is who am I and, and what am I intended to do? Right. Uh, where am I going in life? Uh, if you would have asked me in high school, you know, Bernie, are you going to become a psychologist? Yeah. I would have said you are. You need to see a psychologist if mm -hmm. you think I'm going to become a psychologist. I was yeah. a science engineering uh, math guy, and there was no I, the social. Sci I did not like the social sciences at all. Right. Um, even when I first went to uh, college, nope, not going to do it. Right. But what I what I knew is that whatever I was going to do, mm -hmm. I was going to go as far as I could. So if I was going to be an engineer, I was going to go and get my doctorate in engineering. Right. Later, when I was going to go into medicine, uh, you know, I did e EMT training uh, for emergency medical uh, right. to work on ambulances. And as I'm doing that, I'm thinking, man, this is fascinating stuff. I really love it. Um, but why be an EMT when I could just go for a little bit longer to be a nurse? Right. And then why be a nurse when I could just go a little bit longer and, mm -hmm. and be a uh, advanced registered nurse practitioner mm -hmm. and be able to, you know, work under a physician to prescribe right. medications and stuff. And then, of course, as I'm thinking about that, I'm thinking, well, why do that when mm -hmm. I could just be the physician? Mm -hmm. And it, it's, it's that kind of... So in my mind, I always sort of had this goal of whatever field I was going to be in, I was going to go as far educationally as I could. And then from there, I would take it as far as I could right. a, a, as a profession. So you, your identity, mm -hmm. part of your identity was that you were going to reach the top of whatever profession right. you find yourself in. So that's a general sense of who you are. Right. Okay. Yeah, it wasn't specifics. And, yeah. and I think that right. that's where people sometimes um, right. falter is that, you know, I want to be... A, a, a pediatric oncologist. Well, that's so specific right. that first of all, there's not going to be a whole lot of you, mm -hmm. you know high school people who, who are right. high schoolers who are going to think of that unless they had some family experience mm -hmm. with it. Mm -hmm. um, but but second of all, when it's that specific, as soon as there's a little bit of a, a wrench right. in right. the in the mm -hmm. process, like organic chemistry, there's a little bitty right. wrench in the in the way. Mm -hmm. You're not able to accomplish that, and now your entire sense of self has crumbled because now I can't be right. this very specific thing that I That's tried right. to identify for myself. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so, you, what we're so again, what we're referring to here is a very general, broad concept, mm -hmm. a, a broad idea of this is the direction that I want to do, and, and this is how I see myself. I see myself as um, becoming this. Or I see myself as becoming something in this area, right. and and knowing that without it, really without any doubt that mm -hmm. that's what you're going to accomplish. This is who I am. Right. Right. Um, yeah. We we in our field we base much of this information on the work of Eric Erickson. Right. You know who 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 uh, show sort of led the way. Mm -hmm. Um. And and it begins very early in elementary school. Right. Where kids make a decision about am I going to be a good student? Right. Or or am I going to be lazy and and not care? Mm -hmm. And if you are a good student in elementary school, that carries you into middle school. Middle school carries you into high school. But you've identified yourself right as a competent, high achieving student right. who's willing to work hard to achieve at a very high level. Exactly. That's an early early identity. Right. That, you don't have to decide you're going to be a lawyer when you're 10, right. but you have to decide you're going to be a good student when you're 10. Right. And Erickson told us, taught us about those stages of, uh, of identity development. Right. Okay. In, in his adolescent uh, conflict... And when you get to teenage years, right. exactly. Mm -hmm. Yeah, during the adolescent years, you have identity, you know, very specifically, he talked about identity versus role confusion. That's, that's when you make the decision right. of who, who you, you are, are, what group am I going to be in, mm -hmm. what am I going to do in the future. Right. You know, if, if that's when most people decide, well, I'm going to be an athlete. Right. I'm going to be mm -hmm. an athlete, period. And so all of your effort goes into right. that. Others say, I'm going to be a student. I'm right. going to be this. I'm going to be that. You, you decide your sexual development, your mm -hmm. sexual orientation. Mm -hmm. I am a boy. I am a girl. Um, that's all determined during this very difficult transition from childhood to adulthood that we call adolescence. Right. And some of it, um, some of it is a decision. And some of it is a realization. A real, that's a discovery. A discovery, a discovery. Right. right. So, so like you, you mentioned, uh, sexual orientation, th that that may not be 
a overt decision that is made, right. but it's a, a realization that you come to because of ex, of the way that you're examining yourself. And that's right. that's really what is happening during this, this stage of development. And so when we think about what how that relates to resilience, and, and it, maybe before we even get to resilience, we think about mental health. Uh, what we One of the things we know about adolescents, and it, this is just a very interesting way in which all of this stuff ties together is that during, bless you. That's a very gentle sneeze. Wasn't it was. It? Um, a light sort of sneeze. My apologies. It got me distracted. Don't be distracted. You want me to pick it up where you left off? No, I got, I'm okay. Because I was listening. You were? So, so, but what we think about with adolescents is as we're formulating our identity, a, a common um, experience in adolescence is right. are things like depression and anxiety and some of those things. Those things all appear during adolescence. That's I, the age of onset. Absolutely. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so it's it's interesting that at the stage in which our identity, we sort of know we need to have an identity, but yet we haven't quite conceptualized it. That's the time when we be we we feel less secure, less stable mm -hmm. uh, emotionally. So this, this connection between identity and mental health is, is really illustrated well during the adolescent years. Right. Right. So, and then you can, so you can see those students who, during those adolescent years, mm. you can see uh, it's, it's almost written on their face when they have developed, when they've identified themselves, when they right. say, oh, this is who I am. Mm -hmm. They, they, they they change in, in measurable ways. They mm -hmm. become that identity. And with that realization comes a sense of stability that right. push, pushes them through uh, otherwise insurmountable odds. That's right. That's right. It, it's, what they, it's what they use to get through the tough times. Right. That I am this. Mm -hmm. And that... And they suffer setbacks, but they're able to overcome the setbacks because they have a sure sense of who they are. Right. But you take children who have depression, anxiety, mm -hmm. ADHD, um, other other forms of mental illness, um, and that interferes right. with developing that sense of who I am. A person with depression um, might never develop that very sure sense of this is who I am. Or right. the person with anxiety who is afraid to make a decision or afraid to take a chance. Person with ADHD who's too distracted mm -hmm. to think mm -hmm. about it. So all of these things can interfere with the development of one's identity. Right. They get in the way, especially during the teenage years, right. they interfere with a person's sense, emerging sense of, of who I am. Right, and those, those, are, um, those, are, those are great points, but I think and, and much of today is going to be us sort of working working through this uh, mm -hmm. with this podcast. But, you know, as you're talking about that, one of the things that I think about, too, is how parenting is involved with this. That's right. You know, mm -hmm. authoritarian parents oftentimes don't afford their children the opportunity to experience as many things as children who grow That's up right. with other mm -hmm. other uh, in other parenting styles. Right. And so not only is the child's uh, sort of individual mental health and and characteristics uh, uh, an important factor, but right. the factor associated with those in their environment that have control over many of the things that they do That's or right. don't do. Because it is a process of exploration. Right. And, and, a, and an authoritarian parent will say, no, you're going to do this. Mm -hmm. you know, and then the mm -hmm. child feels the obligation to do what what is asked, right? You know? But it's not their discovery; it's right. not their decision, and so it's not their identity. It's right. their parents' identity, right? So yeah, so we're you know if you're the <clears throat> parent of, of, of children, right. especially children as they're approaching uh, adolescence, mm -hmm. we have to let them experience other things. And we've talked about this on other podcasts, but you know, you you can't tell your eight-year-old, oh, no, we are a baseball family, so you're going to play baseball, even <laughs> right. though he may want to play soccer. Right. Uh, you can't do that because you're not allowing him the or her the opportunity right. to experience something different, something that may connect or, mm -hmm. or really invigorate right. your child. So you have to allow them some of those other experiences. Exactly. Right. Um, so... Mental health issues and, and parenting issues, as we've, as we've said, can 
interfere with healthy uh, mm -hmm. development of self. Right. But you know, when we don't develop our, ide mm -hmm. our identity very well, that can lead to mental health issues as well. That's so right. we, we have, you know, this whole phenomenon of failure to launch. Oh, we did a we did a podcast about it a couple of weeks ago, mm -hmm. and as we've been talking about this particular idea, um, it, it sort of starts to make sense that perhaps many of those individuals who have difficulty striking out and, and getting out on their own, many of those individuals may have a a malformed or or an, an under developed sense of who they are and so mm -hmm. they don't have they don't have a direction because they even if the even if you go to college you don't necessarily have a direction no and i think it's an it's an enormously important point um if you if you don't develop this sense of identity as a teenager right. at least by the time you're 17 or 18, by the time you graduate from high school if you're still not sure what you want to do um you've missed out in fact there's a there's a psychologist by the name of uh, marcia I think Robert Marcia, um, who talks about uh, the moratorium. You know that there are some right. people who just say, "Well, I don't want to decide." There are some kids who just right. say, I, "I, I, just don't want to decide." Uh, there are others who aren't permitted to decide, and so you go into the early adult years mm -hmm. without mm -hmm. a sense of identity. Right. Well, if that lasts long enough. Mm -hmm. You could easily slip into depression, right. anxiety, Absolutely. because eventually it's going to dawn, oh, I do have to make a living. Right. My, my parents, hopefully, my parents aren't going to support me for the rest of my life. Right. So I have to develop a sense. I have to now make a decision about what, I, what I'm going to do right. based on who I am. Mm -hmm. But I don't know who I am, right. so I don't know what to do. Right. And, and, and uh, absolutely, because when we... And the other piece of not having a, a, a well-formulated identity is the idea that if there is any insult, uh, any confrontation, any conflict mm -hmm. that challenges you, you don't have any foundation to stand on to find your stability. So, you know, we have those right. situations where, okay, so I'm not really sure who I am, but I'm mm -hmm. doing this and... You know, somebody says, oh, well, you know, you're pretty lousy. Right. Uh, you're a pretty lousy waiter. You can be crushed by that know, right. because if, if, you're, if you're not, if you don't know who you are, mm -hmm. it doesn't take much to really emphasize that and, and right. exaggerate that. That's right. Because if, the, if they take that away, mm -hmm. if they take your job away, well, your job isn't who, typically isn't who you are. Mm -hmm. there, um, and so if they criticize you, and you don't know who you are, right. that criticism could just knock the pins out from under you right. and you're sort of lost. Right. Um, without and that it. throws you into those deep depressions. That throws right. you into it's a reactive, significant anxiety. Right. You know, it's, right. Not a, it's not a, a chemical imbalance, but it's still very real. It's a reactive depression. Right. So, yeah, you have to have a, a sense. Um, there was a, there's something we do in academics called tenure, mm -hmm. to earn tenure. And people who don't get tenure are devastated by that decision right. but because they identify themselves as mm -hmm. a professor right. right and and if that's taken away mm -hmm. life falls apart right. because you're you're denied you know and and I said to somebody one time well I said my, but my my um identity isn't tied to this and and her response mine is Right, and when she didn't get tenure, it was devastating to her. Right, she switched fields altogether. Yeah, um, because her identity was tied to her job, uh, her 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 uh, uh, profession. Mm -hmm. And once that was taken away, she just she just had to change. She had to change jobs. Right, mm -hmm. right. Um, but th there's also a when we talk about the teenagers developing a sense of identity, another place where it becomes very important is in selecting a partner. Right. Because, right. and we talk about this all the time in therapy, if you don't know who you are, if you don't have a sure sense of who you are, mm -hmm. how do you choose a mate? Right. On what basis do you select a partner? Right. Because if you don't know and have a very sure sense that this is who I am, how do you then go out and find somebody who's compatible? Right. And if you're 18 years old, uh, that may... That may be a difficult decision to make. Right. Absolutely. Absolutely. So, so there's a lot that, that goes along 
with developing your sense of self and your sense of identity. Mm -hmm. and, and as we've discussed, all of those things influence and, and direct and contribute to or, or contribute against right. your sense of your, your ability to be resilient. That's right. Um, That's right. You know, how are you going to handle getting a C? Or how are you going to handle, you know, it, handle a, a breakup or mm -hmm. when something doesn't work out the way that you wanted to, as you said with the, that tenure example, if your self, if your sense of who you are is completely tied to that, that specific, specific particular thing, right. then you're really going to have a hard time as soon as it doesn't work out. That's right. That's right. And so, mm -hmm. so we have to make sure that we create an identity that's robust, mm -hmm. that, that is not so specific that it's easy to remove or easy to That's fracture, right. mm -hmm. but but general enough that you can say, you know, this is the direction I'm going. So it's, you know which direction you're going. So I know that I'm going this way and, and not this way. As I started going into um, the medical field, mm -hmm. I knew that I was going towards a um, human services type of direction right. as opposed to an engineering direction. Mm -hmm. And so so there was some specificity there, but the specificity was was general, um, if that makes any sense at all. Well, it, it does, because if you take an athlete, for example, or take a high school kid who's gonna, I'm gonna be an athlete, I'm gonna be a pro athlete. Right. Well, most of them are not even gonna be, are not even going to be college athletes. Right. Okay, so then you get to college and they say, okay, I'm going to the pros, I'm gonna play in college, then I'm right. going to go to the pros. Most are not. It's right. a very small percentage. But you may not make it to the pros, mm -hmm. but you could become a very good coach. Right. Okay. You could become a very good high school coach, a very right. good college coach, a very good professional coach. Um, there are, so you define it generally, I want to be in the world. Maybe right. you're going to be a sportscaster. Right. Maybe you're going to be a writer right. or sports illustrator. So there are areas within the field of athletics mm -hmm, where mm -hmm. you can find a place to be. Right. You define that you are interested in this, you identify yourself as an athlete, mm -hmm. as a person interested in athletics, and then you rise as high right. as you can in that profession. Right. Okay. Well, and, and somebody who wants to work in the medical field, right. you know, you, again, medical field versus pediatric oncology. Right. If you, if your idea is so specific, no, I'm, I'm going to be a pediatric oncologist, period. Right. right. As soon as you get to, you know, organic chemistry, and you have and you struggle organic chemistry is sort of the weeder course right that's mm -hmm. what they refer to it mm -hmm. it's it's the course that identifies real potential medical students from not <laughs> real uh, well, medical anybody students. in that field i was talking to an occupational therapist the mm -hmm. other day and she said it was the same thing for them organic right. chemistry was the divider right uh, the, if you could get through organic chemistry most of those people completed the occupational therapy right. training right mm -hmm. so so you get there and you, and you struggle well, if your goal is so specific, pediatric oncology, that you and you fail right. um, or, or just cannot get past organic chemistry, mm -hmm. you're done, right? You, 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 right. you, your, your sense of who you are is gone. Mm -hmm. But if you're saying I'm going into the medical field and you get to organic chemistry and you can't get past it, mm -hmm. now you can say, okay, so that, you know, if I look at the big island mm -hmm. of of the medical field, I can't go on this side of the island because I'm not gonna be able to go to medical school, I'm not gonna do that, mm -hmm. but I can still access this in, this whole Absolutely. big other set of the island, which mm -hmm. may include nursing and uh, uh, being a mm -hmm. physician's assistant That's and some right. of those other things where you can still practice medicine, uh, but just in a slightly different capacity. Exactly. So mm -hmm. when we make this sense of ourself or we identify and realize this sense of who we are, we, we gotta make sure that we don't become too specific. Right. Now, right. So as our identity helps to you know, give us that solid foundation, it's from that foundation that we're going to build our resilience. Mm -hmm. So we're gonna be able to overcome some of those challenges. And go back, going back to some of the examples we used earlier, you know, Hillary Clinton, she knew what she wanted to do. She, mm -hmm. she has been in the public service field area um, her entire life. At least since high school. Right. Because she, she got involved in high school. Yeah. Stephen mm -hmm. Hawking, he, he knew what he was going to study. He had, mm -hmm. his, he, you know, he was working on his theories and his ideas from the time he was a, a right. teenager. Mm -hmm. And so 
because they knew who they were as early as they did, right. that helped them build the resilience and build the well build the foundation from which they could be resilient. And and you know that you know I keep using the word foundation, but what what it does is it, it creates a base. Mm-hmm. It's like that's right. I, I can't, I'm it's, not going to go any lower than this. Right. It's on that base that you build everything else. Right. right. So even if everything else is knocked down, mm-hmm. that base is still there. Right. That's right. And so that's why what we have to have to develop. Right. And and so let's talk about some ways that we would do that. Mm-hmm. Um, we have ten ways. Yeah, because it More is than three. it is important to appreciate that um, it's not this is, resilience is not some mystical quality that some have and some don't. Right. You can do things. Right. And you for yourself, you can do things for your children to develop. Mm-hmm. Um, the, a sense of identity, right, and and therefore a sense of and and therefore resilience, right, right. Okay. So let's talk a little bit about uh, these strategies, and these strategies are are there for whether you're a, a teenager, an adult, it doesn't matter. Right. Uh, these are some of the same strategies that you would use. So the the first one is getting out there. Right. You, you said it earlier. Part of finding out who you are is getting out there and seeing what the options are. Just. Right. You got so you got to get out there. You got to experience as many mm-hmm. different things as you can. Right. You, you can't. Uh, my pet peeve: mm. you're not going to do this sitting on the couch playing video games. Right. You are not. It just isn't going to happen. You. It's too narrow. It's too limiting. You have to get out and do things. You have to right. get out in the world and do things. You can't do this if all of your relationships are on a cell phone. Right. You have to get out and be with other people. Right. Okay. Yeah. So that. So the first one is you got to get out there. Right. The, the second one is maybe once you're out there or or just in general, you you have to talk to other people. Right. That's so right. Real people. Real people. Right. Talk to people that you know. How did they mm-hmm. figure out what they're doing? How right. did they get to where they are? Uh, what were their what what worked for them? What didn't work for them? Mm-hmm. Learn from other people as much as right. you can, so that you can sort of embrace their knowledge and and use it to to help you get where you want to be. Right. That's right. Yeah. And that requires conversations with real individuals. Right. Um, we're all apprentices mm-hmm. in some way, shape, or form, and you je- you have to be out there with other people who know more than you do. Right. Yeah. yeah. The the third thing is. Talk to strangers. So that you, you were just talking to people that you know, but now talk to strangers. Talk to other people. People you don't know as well. Yeah. You know, it could be a teacher, mm-hmm. but but uh, not a family member. Right. Not a close friend. Right. Uh, might be a teacher, might be a coach. But yes, talk to other people. You're going to get a new perspective. Right. Which is what you're looking for. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I remember when I was an undergraduate, I worked at Walmart. And, mm-hmm. and I worked in the sporting goods. Uh, so right. learned all kinds of things about sports and things I'd never mm-hmm. known about. But... What it afforded me the opportunity to do was just talk to people. That's right. And so I was able to learn what other people did, what other mm-hmm. fields were like. Uh, there was a guy that I that I talked to who, who talked a lot about the engineering field. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. it helped formulate my idea that mm, right. maybe I don't want to go in that direction as much as I thought that I did before. Mm-hmm. And so it helped guide some of the decisions I was making. So right. just talk to people that that you encounter in life, Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you know, people that, like you said, people that you don't necessarily know as well as other people. Now, the next thing, number four is read. Um, and and reading can be, that can be fiction, nonfiction. It doesn't matter, but, but read because reading exposes you to other people's perspectives. Uh, So you may not be able to get out and talk to as many strangers as you might want to, Mm -hmm. Or, or perhaps you have some anxiety issues and you, it just doesn't afford you the right. the, the uh, ability to talk to strangers. But read. Right, right. Because what, what we're trying to do is develop a sense of ourselves. Right. So it doesn't matter whether you read fiction or nonfiction. Mm-hmm. You can read biographies of great people if that's what you want to read. That's fine. But you can also read uh, fictional accounts of people because you're, you're going to learn about yourself right. as you read these things. Right. So you're right. You can't talk to everybody but you can read right. um, what others have to say. And whether you're reading fiction or nonfiction, you're going to learn much about who you are right. and what's important to you. Right. And read, mm-hmm. so read from a, and, and from a broad perspective. Don't, you know, I right. only want to read mm-hmm. uh, Republican political based uh, information right. because that's going to, while that's going to be informative, it's going to still be pretty restricted. So 
Be read, broad in your, read in your broad, reading habits. Read broadly. Mm -hmm. the, the next thing, number five, is write. Now, mm. what we have found, because we have really increased the amount that we're writing, and, and I think that you were the first one to really say this to me uh, as I was getting started, mm -hmm. and that is you really you don't know how much you know right. or how much you don't know about a topic until you start to write about it. Okay. Right. Because when you're writing about something, um, especially if you're writing about uh, something about yourself or you're mm -hmm. writing about some topic that you that you know about, as you're writing about it, you start to realize that, man, I, I can't articulate this. Right. I can't, I don't know how to put these feelings, these thoughts into words. Right. And so it really makes you think about and, and sort of engage in some introspection mm -hmm. to understand your thoughts and feelings about things at a level that you usually don't. That's right. That's right. In, in writing and teaching, you know, if you have to teach something, right. that's another place where you learn that right. maybe you don't know as much as you think you know. Um, but you're right. You, you, we all learn to write, but we write to learn what we don't know. Right. That's that's when I find out what I don't know is right. when I start writing about something. And you're right. It's that it's that you get to those points where you think you know something, and suddenly you don't have the words. Right. Which means you don't know it. Right. Yeah. Yeah. You're, you're not as comfortable with it or right. knowledgeable about it as you thought you were. Right. 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 So, mm -hmm. number six is again Stretch. another topic that we've talked about before, and that is stretching your comfort zone. Right. Now, th this should make complete sense. If you are living in your comfort zone. And you've mm -hmm. lived in your comfort zone all of your life, and here you are not sure what your identity is. Right. Why in the world <laughs> would you think that you're going to find it inside your comfort zone? Right. You right. need to stretch that comfort zone. You need to get outside of that comfort zone right. some and see what else is out there. Right. right. Uh, you said it earlier. You're not going to do this by sitting on the couch and playing no. video games. Mm -hmm. you, you have to get yourself out there. And so we were talking a minute ago about talking to strangers. That's, that's it, not that's, what it does. that's not an easy thing to do right. for one but but even though it's not an easy thing to do you, you have to put yourself out there sometimes mm -hmm. to make yourself do it right um, so you, you stretch um, you, you want to do it in a safe way obviously sure. you don't want yeah. to you know do something that's going to cause you uh, emotional damage or anything yeah. like that but you find ways to get out um, and, and you know stretch just a little bit so that you can learn more. We, we hear about people who um, stretch by traveling to mm -hmm. exotic countries, you know, right. Tibet or Afghanistan, or, and then they get into trouble. Right. Like you said, don't put yourself at risk right. for the experience, but you can travel to another state. Right. You can yeah. see the things in this country that are important and worth seeing and that yeah. might change. So you don't have to put yourself in danger. You don't have to go to Tibet to do this. You don't have to go to Equatorial Africa to do this. You don't have to go to the Amazon jungle to discover yourself. You can you can take a trip for uh you know to another state, to another mm -hmm. part of the country. Yeah. Um eat some other food, talk to some other people. Again, you get that broader perspective. Right. That's what we're after. Right. Okay. It doesn't have to be in China. You can do it right here. Right. Now number seven is you got you may need to get educated. You need to learn more. So this kind of goes with the reading and writing mm -hmm. and, and stretching your boundaries a little bit. But you want to get educated. As I said, you know, in my own story earlier, I was, without a shadow of a doubt, I was a um, hard sciences, math, yeah. you know, right. biology, chemistry type of person. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I really enjoyed organic chemistry. Uh, but when I started to educate myself in some of these other areas, I start to learn other things and think, wow, that's, that's, interesting that's fascinating well. stuff. Right. Mm -hmm. And, and so, you know, that's the, that's the beauty of college, the college experience, at least here in the United States, right. is that we have these opportunities to take courses in, in areas that, you know, you may have never right. thought to take a course in before. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, other countries don't necessarily afford that same thing. Now they're on a faster track, you know, you can finish your, your degree in England uh, about a year or so faster than you can here in the United States, mm -hmm. but that's because you don't take some of these extra, you know, general education classes or some of these electives that you would take here in the United States. Mm -hmm. So especially for those who aren't exactly sure what they want to do, that foundation isn't completely set. When you go to and get educated, you're going to learn so much more about right. 
other areas that you would have never otherwise explored. And that's why colleges have that two-year general, right. general uh, they call it general education, because you should be taking courses from a broad um, array mm -hmm. um, so that you get exposed to um, n you have numerous experiences, you get exposed to mm -hmm. numbers of courses, and then you can make a decision about how you want to specialize in your third and fourth year of college. Exactly. But, that, but that's why colleges are set up the way they are, is to get you broadly educated. Right. Mm -hmm. Now, number eight is um, you want to find a way to do a trial run. So this may be, uh, you know, we always resist the tendency to get a job that we know is temporary. We, yeah. we always, you know, resist mm -hmm. um, doing some of those things that we, that's not going to be permanent. Well, you know, why would I get a job for just two months? Right. Well, Getting a job for two months is a great safe way mm -hmm. to figure out if that's something that you enjoy. Right. So, you know, working for temp agencies, doing seasonal work, all of those things are great ways. It, you know, some people sort of fantasize about the idea of working at Disney. Mm -hmm. Well, Disney has peak seasons. And during those peak seasons, they often hire people for mm -hmm. uh, temporary positions just for, you know, a couple of months or so. What better way to see if that's something that you would want to do than to you know mm -hmm. get get a job uh, that's that's temporary. That's right. I had um, never intended to go into education. Mm -hmm. I, again, I was like you going in, and but I decided that I wanted to be a college professor. Right. Okay. So I made the decision while I was in college, uh, because of the wonderful examples I had in my mm -hmm. teachers mm -hmm. that this is what I wanted to do. I wanted to have, I wanted to give to others what they had given to me. Right. Okay. But in order to do that, in order to go to graduate school, I had to teach because right. I. Um, so I began teaching um, middle school, mm -hmm. absolutely fell in love with it right. and said, wow, this is something I'd really like to do. Never in my wildest dreams did I ever plan right. to teach any except at the college level. Right. Right? Suddenly I fall in love, and I did that for several years right. and ended up teaching then running a school for years. Then I went back to graduate school, but I, I quite yeah. accidentally discovered something that I really, really loved. Had I not done that... Had, I would have missed that whole experience. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So substitute teaching is a great way to out. see if that's something that would be interesting. You for might you. you might try teaching and say I absolutely hate this. You know, right. But, but try it. If you don't like it, it's a simple process. You right. Just switch. Now right. number nine is sort of a, a, another version of the same thing, and that is volunteering. You know, that's you right. don't. You do it I, as a volunteer. The and nobody likes to work for free. You know, let's right. be honest. Right. But. It's first of all, if you're not working anyways, you know, what there's not much of a difference except right. for you're giving your time to see mm -hmm. if this is something that you would be interested in. Right. But two, even if you are working and you're having to volunteer time for this, what you're you, the the experience, the the value of knowing whether or not this is something you want to do is is immeasurable. And you know the other thing about volunteering is it's not just the work that you would be doing. But it's the people you get exposed right. to. And it may be that these are the kind of people I want to be with. Or I don't want to have anything to do with these people. Right. So it's the experience, not just of the task, mm -hmm. but of the people you're exposed to. Right. And once again, what we want to do is be exposed to as many different right. kinds of people as we can. Right. So volunteering has, has two advantages. One is the task, but the other is the people. Right. Yeah, it, it's certainly a way to get your foot in the door. Mm -hmm. If you get there and you figure out, wow, this is really something I like, and then, well, you know, there's a position coming open, and so now I've been doing this for, you know, volunteering for this many months. Now I'm a shoe in hopefully, for this new position. That's right. Um, uh, high school students will do that with mm -hmm. um, hospitals. Right. They, they think they want to go into the medical field, so they go in and they volunteer, mm -hmm. and they say, oh, my gosh, I don't want any part of this. Right. You know, that, that's a good thing to know. Um, or on the other hand, they say, this is absolutely what right. I want. Okay. Yeah. So by volunteering, you, uh, you, you can um, yeah. help make that decision. Absolutely. Now, the tenth thing is, is something you can do on your own, and, and that is just the simple self-reflection, some of the things that we've talked about many, many times before. And that is, you know, stopping and thinking about who you are. Right. Um, you know, are you the type of person, what does success mean to you? Right. And that, That's right. that right. is probably the most important question that you can ask yourself. But you, you, you have to first define what success means. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, is success for you that you want to be a millionaire? Okay, that's... 
um, well, first of all, that's a silly <laughs> definition well, from the perspective. But of, is it? You, it's such something that's so specific that again. But what does that mean? What does it mean to be a millionaire? But if you define success as money, you know, as right. much money as I can make, right? Then, then that's that's what. And, and that's that's what I was getting to is that right. you don't want to be so specific that you say I want to make this much money per right. year, right. because while that, unless that's just a temp, uh, a short term goal or, or mm -hmm. a a temporary goal or a goal that gets you ultimately because. If, to be a millionaire, what does being a millionaire do for you? Mm -hmm. Well, it makes you to where you don't have to worry about bills. Okay, right. so you want, what you're really talking about is financial Bring security. Right. You're not talking about, I've got to be a millionaire. You're saying, I want financial security. I want to know that my bills are going to be paid, that I'm going to have um, food on the table, and that I'm going to be able to you know, go on vacation right. once or twice a year if I want to. Right. Okay, that's very different than saying, I want to be mm -hmm. a millionaire. Right. Because you don't have to have a million dollars to do that. Right. Right. And so if you if you restrict your goal to something so specific that it doesn't afford you the opportunity to realize success mm -hmm. otherwise, that's where you're going to you're going to start having problems. So right. you, whenever you define what success means for you, make sure that you are um, make sure that you really look at the root of what you're what you're asking for. That's right. So again, financial security over being a millionaire. That's right. Um, you want to be. You know, if you define success as having a, a spouse and children, okay, so you're, you're talking about wanting to have a family, um, that's um, that's a very different type of success than I think many people think of when they think of success. But it, but it may be critical for you. That that's right. I don't. You may be the type of person that I don't care where I work. I don't care what I do for a living. Mm -hmm. All I want to know is that every day I get to come home to a wife, my wife and kids. Right. That that. That is a, a wonderful, wonderful goal. That's right. Um, and it's a wonderful definition of success. But that means something different than saying, I want to be a physician. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. so you've got to know what success means to you so that you know when you've attained it. But you see this relationship again between identity and resilience because if what you want is a family, mm -hmm. you lose your job, you still have your family. Right. So you have your core identity even though you suffer disappointments along the way. Right. Okay? That's what we've been talking about. Right. Here. Exactly. This is another, another example of that. Right. Is, um, but self-reflection, man. Yeah. You know, so it's about what, what you really want. Right. You know. Yeah. So you really have to define, define in, a, in a very clear way what success means. And if once you know what success means, you typically... It typically reveals the path for you. You know, you know what I love to hear when people, people who have been successful financially, mm -hmm. who are financially secure, mm -hmm. will come into the office and say, it doesn't matter. I, I know how to do poor. I, I've been poor and I know how to, I prefer being rich, mm -hmm. but I can do poor. That means, what that means to me is their identity has been established. Right. It, it's not, take away the money. Right. They're still going to be the same person. Right. That person, she's going to be the same. Right. Regardless of whether she's rich or poor. That to me is a sign of mental. Right. Yeah. And so, so the, so the success and, and as you're, as you're building on this self-reflection, you define what success means. And then you have to look at what makes you happy. What, what do you enjoy? Uh, you may be the type of person that enjoys working with other people. Okay, so that opens up a wide array mm -hmm. of career opportunities or, right. or things to, to drive to. You may be the type of person that prefers to work in a room by yourself without mm -hmm. anyone else. Okay. That opens up another wide mm -hmm. array and variety of opportunities. Mm -hmm. But you need to know that about yourself. Right. You need to, and, and that's going to come with experience. That's going to come with reflecting on your, your past and, and really seeing mm -hmm. what has worked for you before. Right. And once you know that, then you can start making some decisions and really say, and, and I guess the last piece of the, the self-reflection is you have to be comfortable with that. Mm -hmm. You have to say, you know what, as much as I would like to be a social person, as much as I would like to be an extroverted person that enjoys working in a mm -hmm. big office with lots of moving parts and lots of energy and everything going around, I really don't function well that right. way. Right. And so I need a job that's going to be more quiet, where I can have a lot, plenty of time mm -hmm. to work on my own. 
you have to accept that about yourself. Right. Um, don't don't fight against who you are. Understand who you are and figure out how you're going to make it work for right. you. That's right. If you like being around, I, if you get your energy from other people, mm -hmm. then you need to be in a situation. You can't you can't work alone at a desk. Right. Okay. If if you get your energy from being alone, mm -hmm. then don't try to put yourself in a right. situation where you have people around because they're simply going to aggravate you. Right. Okay. So you need to know these things about yourself. Right. And if you if you develop a sure sense of your own identity, it's going to be much easier for you to be resilient. And that's right. that's after all, that is what we want here is we want you to be more resilient. Being more resilient means you have a sure sense of your own identity. Absolutely. Because if something bad happens, you're still the same person. Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. So good Ooh. one. I like that. All right. I really I said that at the beginning. I like this. I like the the, the melding of um, identity with resilience. Right, right. I like, it's a good good thing. As you work through this, let us know how you're doing. Let us know if you have any questions, mm -hmm. if, if there's anything that works for you that doesn't work for you. Uh, if you have other strategies that you think people mm -hmm. would find helpful, you know, write to us and let us know. Yeah. We'd be happy to share them because, after all, you know, the more, the more of us that can be self-aware right. and resilient, the better off everybody's going to be because mm -hmm. it's going to help with the mental right. health issues and just happiness in general. So, mm -hmm. All right. Very good. Welcome well, to 2017. Yes. We will be back next week with another uh, episode, another topic, mm -hmm. another thing that we'll talk about and hopefully help you make your life the best mm -hmm. that it can be. So have a great weekend. Yes, this, that's right. The weekend is here. That's right. So, okay. all right. Enjoy. So until next week, I'm Dr. Bernie. I'm Dr. Richard. Stay happy, stay healthy, and forget to be afraid.